I need to do a magic trick where I just like blow a bunch of smoke and then disappear. And I can change my mind and reappear. And then I can disappear again. What are you talking about? Is that from something? Yeah, you don't remember that? It's like a uh it's like a LeBron James Nike commercial or something like him in school. And then there was like a parody of it with Brett Favre, like some dude that looks like Brett Favre. I don't, you don't think so. You don't remember seeing that? Dude, mm. oh my God. You're gonna you're gonna fucking die, dude. It's like because LeBron's like like what if I you know what if I did this or what if I did this like saying a bunch of shit that like uh I don't know the haters and the the media and shit say and then the Brett Favre one he was like what should I do should I send my pictures of my dick to people <laughs> <laughs> I could do Google image search for big dicks say it was mine <laughs> that'll probably work is that a real commercial uh the LeBron one is okay but the parody one oh is the not. parody the parody yeah yeah okay. <laughs> He's like coaching this kid on a football field. He's like, Tommy, completions look way more awesome when you force them into triple coverage. Remember that. <laughs> I, not oh, remember I can't believe that. I haven't seen that, dude. That's the awesome. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. I hope this wasn't planned because if not, it's going to be pretty cool. Y- yeah, this. Does my thingy dingy look centered? Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, now, everyone, hope you all had a great day. Welcome back to the Poor Choices Show, episode number 31. I'm your host, Chris, here with my co-host, David. And to Ludacris, Ed Reed, Bear Bryant, Tom Landry, and Zay Flowers. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Subscribe. Totally unplanned. That's crazy. I figured I w- it was. I wore it just because they're playing the opening game tomorrow night. You you like cracked your beer a lot quicker than I expected you to. Like usually we say happy birthday at the same time and then it's like a synonymous oh, yeah. crack. But you like delay. I think the Zay Flowers thing was processing. It was. I was like, so wait, because you, like, you also said Ed Reed, and I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. So yeah. my Reed jersey, and then you said Zay, and I was like, huh? I did so it good. I let, I, let, I let you buffer, and then I, like, saw you. I was, like, trying to time your reach for your beer, and I popped it so quick, shit, like, splattered everywhere. I think it's all over my screens, because I was just like. <laughs> well, these craft beers like the big 16 ounce ones no matter what i do if i just let it sit i tap the can doesn't matter i open that thing and it's like nagasaki dude it's crazy well usually it's it's like that but like i opened it so fast that it just like yeah 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 yeah. but yeah i actually left zay flowers off because i was like i already got it read that's really funny i was actually uh, torn between i was either gonna wear this or kyle hamilton and uh Wow, you picked the right out. choice. That worked out really well. That's really bizarre that that happened. Do, 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 uh, do. Good, not, knocked that one out early since within we, the uh, first like two minutes we got yeah, it. Yeah, we slept <laughs> last week. So uh, to Sean Livingston, um, I'm sorry. Happy birthday that to you too. But uh, he played for the Warriors. He was that dude that like never missed a mid range jumper. He had like I mean, a, he, he had to miss oh there he is. far back hairline. I see him now. Yeah. Yeah. Sean but, with a with the AUN. Oh, special. Yeah. He got yeeted for for Zay. Yeah, good. Good, 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 good. Uh knock knock. Who is there? 9-11. It was bad. Oh, 9-11 who? You said you'd never forget. Mm. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, looked, that looked like another buffer. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that was it was okay. Um, you know, I started to um tell everyone um about the benefits of eating dried grapes. Go I'm, on. I'm raising awareness. Mm. <laughs> I'm a little biased because uh, I fucking hate raisins. 
So what if it's raisins on peanut butter on a celery stick and you're eating some ants on a log? That's that's two out of three things I don't like. What if it's raisins in a cinnamon raisin bagel? <sighs> Typically, I'll suffer through it. Mm-hmm. But what if it's raisin? It'll, it'll never... raisins in a cereal, but not just raisin bran. Raisin bran crunch, the ultimate cereal. I, th- I think it's just gross, but like crunchy gross. <laughs> crunchy gross. What else is country? Country crunchy gross. <laughs> Um, crunchy, gross, crunchy, crunchy, gross cicadas. Yeah, that's gross. Ew, that's icky. Yeah, yeah, don't people do that? <laughs> well, you, well, I you didn't said have an answer on a log. Yeah, oh man, speaking uh, of ants, I, I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to ask how they're doing. So that was over a week ago, right? Well, it was a bit, exactly a week ago, and according to the internet, it says, um. You know, typically a smaller colony takes one, two, maybe three days. Um, a large colony could take anywhere from a week to two weeks. And then a, a giant colony can take anywhere from three to a month, um, three weeks to a month. So this morning, over the past couple of days, actually, I've noticed an increase in activity. So this has been happening for a week. They haven't stopped. So this means that it's definitely a bigger colony. Um, I have also on Monday, I bought another type of bait and place that like in their like you know how they lay like their pheromone lines so they know where to follow each other and go so i put a couple of those traps that are just like walk in eat it take it back there too and this morning when i came out and looked it was just like like even in my peripheral i could just like see my walls moving i was like all right i've had a fuck enough so i went underneath my my sink where I have my like six to 12 month insect repellent that I usually put around like the doors and like under the ovens and stuff like that, that I right. spray maybe twice a year. And I just fricking went on a fricking what's the word I'm looking for? Like a tear. It was a, it was a tear, but it was a, it was genocide ant genocide. So I figured out there was <laughs> two different places where they are coming out of and going back into. So the first step was I'm going to eliminate all these motherfuckers. I should have videotaped myself. Just 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 all of them <laughs> all of them they were they were like happy good they were like, i'm just eating my 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 you know i got my candy and i'm just eating i'm eating away and i just crushed them and then i found where they were going in and out of douse that too haven't seen when i got home today from work not a single speck was moving i said you know what maybe didn't kill the colony but they ain't coming back yeah so did enough after a week i was over and i ain't I'm done. They can live in the wall. That's fine. They can stay in there. I don't give a shit. As long as yeah, they, they ain't my, termites, they ain't hurt that's, nobody. That's fine. So yeah, I would have. You lasted longer. I would have three days, and I would have just hosed it just down like, for like ten seconds, and I would have taken some like hot glue and just like put it over the hole. I just my in my mind, I was like, yeah, take this to your queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been four days. Yeah, keep taking it to that bitch. Yeah. Uh huh. And then finally, I was like, you know what? Fucking pow, 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 pow. Those are the noises I made when I was shooting them, too. I believe it. I can see you in there doing that. <laughs> well, it sounds like you won. That's that's good. It was uh, it's like a scene out of like like a Civil War movie where there's just like all these dead bodies everywhere. And it's just like ma- carnage and just mayhem and just blood and guts everywhere. That's right. That's like uh, after I told you I got stung by a, by a wasp. After that, I, I ordered some. Uh, I was texting with Andy. Cause I have like this insecticide it's for like the yard and the grass and you know, to get rid of all that shit, but it doesn't apparently doesn't work on bees and wasps. So mm. I had to order this other shit and it's like fuck 30 bucks for like the eight ounces. And I was like, fuck it. You're supposed to put like, like a tablespoon, not even in like oh, however okay. much water. And I was like, Nope, I put like half the <laughs> fucking dose. container in there and I went out. <laughs> yeah. Where I, and I saw where the, the nest was, like in the corner of the window and I was like unscrewed the thing to put it on fucking rifle mode and just hell yeah. And I could just see them like pow, pow. afterwards there was like eight of them just laying on the, like the windowsill. I'm so sorry. And they were boys. Like, you should, it was great. Cause it, a couple of them, they like start coming out and flying away and I'm like running across the front yard, like trying to <laughs> fucking hit them. Was, I'd like to great. see that security cam footage. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, but now I, I have was, PTSD every time I mow the lawn because like a fucking like fruit fly will fly by me and I'm just like freaking out. <laughs> well, I think I Fuck had like thing. I've always had this 
like one like so i remember very vividly being caught maybe in uh, second or third grade we were at a friend of my mom's house and i was down in their basement because they had one of those really cool like two basketball hoop arcade games that had like the piece that rolled yeah. down with the mini basketballs you could just shoot right. and shoot so i was playing that and i like i got bored and like i found a box of matches and i was like oh matches oh yes this is fire so i went outside and they had a pool and i remember seeing a bunch of ants and i was like fuck yeah these ants are going down so i'm out there just burning matches burning ants and her her and her friend walked out and like cj what are you doing and it's like in my mind i just picture myself like holding the lit match just like looking up at them like what do i say i'm doing right now yeah there's not a science experiment and i don't remember the excuse but i remember getting in trouble and i just i feel like that's one of those things that like when you watch these like serial killer like documentaries that they're like <laughs> <laughs> all right this boy needs to see a psychiatrist yeah. like he's he's bad yeah, like, they get like they get like their childhood neighbors on and you know they're like old as fuck and in a wheelchair and they're like we knew something was wrong with him back then <laughs> well come on what kid isn't out there like crushing bugs and like getting your magnifying glass out and like every kid yeah does that. well at least maybe not now well yeah i'd say yeah yeah, I mean, come on. Now I feel like they're just grabbing their dad's nine and going out there and like, fuck this ant. Well, this morning, uh, four people dead in Georgia, nine wounded, right? In that high school? Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was, it's oh. been a busy day. Yeah, it said um, a teenager, and the way they worded it is like he didn't go to the school, but was affiliated with the school, um, is in custody and alive. Wounded nine and killed four this morning in Appalachie High School in Georgia. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it was the day. You know, I guess it gonna, won't be the day when this comes out, but yeah, I mean, the, yeah. My first thought is like, all right, so someone in high power was like, all right, we'll pay this family like five hundred grand to have their kid go do this. You know, it's election season. Let's 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 get these school shootings ramped back up so we can start, yeah. you know, yeah. really, really because both of them came out immediately with stuff, you know, Harris and Trump, like, bam, 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 right. like this, this, this. And it is that it is that time school just started back in September. Elections are coming up in what, two months? Um, I mean, that's a, I think to me, it might be a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but maybe we're hiring people to, to do this stuff. And, you know, we probably are. Well, I mean. Not people I wouldn't, per se, but more like, hey, you have no choice. Plus, we're going to give you all this money. Like, we have this hanging over you. Basically, blackmail. Right. For you to go do this. For me, it's like, I think it's kind of like how it is with most conspiracy theories for me. Like, I, I don't think there's any that I'm like, definitely. Like, this, this is, yeah, like, fuck, this mm-hmm. is it. But mm-hmm. most of them, I'm like, well, I don't want to say most of them, but like a lot of them that I like dive deep into, I'm like, eh, like I don't not agree with it. So, what about um Jewish lasers in space controlling the weather? You ever heard of Jewish one? lasers <laughs> in space? Like <laughs> Jewish lasers in space. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all I can think about is freaking sharks with freaking laser beams. Oh, I was thinking of like like Muppets, like. <laughs> Puppet Treasure Island in space. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that one. What you got there? Uh, it's something about the the head Jewish leaders have control of the weather by shooting lasers to heat or cool clouds, and they can control the weather basically. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that one. I know I've uh I've heard like the government controls the weather, and I yeah. heard uh yeah Bill was it Bill Gates? I think Bill Gates. <laughs> Like make can make it fake snow or something. Hmm. So when he when he when he does that, do you think he like listens to like now make it rain, now make it rain, now make it rain on them (laughs) hoes? You ever seen Bill Gates? And and he's just sitting back in his chair, like like doing like the the Tom Cruise from Tropic Thunder, just like Oh yeah, or that. Uh I'm gonna say judging by not the look on that guy's face, but just that guy's face. No, I don't I don't think he's that's what makes it a bigger conspiracy theory because he could never do that. Hmm. Well he could do I just don't think that's what he's <laughs> listening to when he does it. 
I think he's he's probably like, let I'm it just, snow, let I'm it snow. Just picturing him snow. in his lazy boy. <laughs> make it rain, I'll make it rain on him hoes. I make it rain. <laughs> oh man, just like, and his wife's above him. Yeah, doing the like the, also yeah. the dollar bills, and he's just like, come on, come on. <laughs> mm. That's great. What about what about a nine eleven conspiracies? Some pretty good ones out there. Um, the the. Honestly, what opened my eyes up to it, I think the most was that, um, uh, what's that movie called? Vice with, um, Christian Bale plays Dick Cheney. Have you seen that okay. movie? No. It's a very good watch. Um, where it's, you know, Dick Cheney's running, running the show and turning it into a business and, and, and realizing that he needs to get to the Middle East. And it's kind of one of those like, they kind of make it seem like, oh, no, this thing happened, I guess. Now we really have to do what I was planning to do the whole time anyways. So it's kind of. So is it like 9-11 or is it just like. A... It's 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 about Dick Cheney's power as a vice president where you would think that like George was just kind of like the puppet and Dick was the guy who was really, mm. really behind the scenes making all this stuff happen. Um the other only other thing I've really seen is I've seen like clips of like, oh, you, this plane crashing in. You can see this extra um, tank underneath of it where these jumbo jets don't have those like these 737s don't carry these tanks. It's actually extra gas or whatever or, or fuel right. or there's no markings on the plane. It's unmarked. And then, you know, all the ones that are like, oh, uh, you know, jet fuel can't burn through steel like it did. Yeah, and can't the melt building, steel beams. Building next to it wouldn't have gone down, and it wouldn't have fallen the way it fell, and you know all that stuff. I mean, everyone's seen it. So the the building next to it thing. That's I think that's the one that first got me like looking into it because it was what building seven. Yeah, and it was not not the fact that it fell, but the fact that it fell at like five p.m. that day. Like long when, after when, everything happened, the and then all of a sudden, watching. yeah, all of a sudden mm-hmm. at five, like eight, what well, eight hours later, it's just like, mm, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like why, how would that happen? Yeah, yeah. and then there's a uh, there's like zero footage of a plane hitting the Pentagon. That's a good one too. There is uh-huh. zero footage of that there's, where people yeah. say like it was actually a missile, and then they planted plane parts there, kind right. of thing, right? Either right. that or or they ignited it themselves yeah Uh, Yeah. one of the things i was reading said uh it was talking about like the instructor or the uh the hijackers and like their i guess they interviewed like their flight instructors uh wherever they trained i think somewhere in florida and apparently their instructor said that one of the dude's flying skills were so bad that uh like they wouldn't even certify him to fly a single engine prop like a little cessna kind of thing yeah Wow. And and he aimed for arguably the like the largest building by surface area, but like the smallest surface area of the Pentagon. And they said that oh, even okay, so like, he was the supposed pilot of the plane that crashed into the Pentagon, right? But dude, they couldn't said even control a, a single prop engine, right? And they said that that's a feat that even experienced pilots said would, would be next to impossible. Doing. Yeah, like okay. let alone controlling a a seven fifty seven. Well, if this were to be something like that happened like in the past 10 years where everyone in the world has like a smartphone and a camera, you would think something like that gets captured. But the fact that it happened, all we really have back then is security cameras to go off of. Right. Well, but that was one of the arguments is that's that's supposed to be the single most secure building like in the world. And there's not security cameras. There has to be there, out there. There's some. Like, so you would think that there's eyewitnesses that are like, yes, because it's the middle of D.C. rush hour morning. It's like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Right. That said, oh, yeah, I saw a plane flying very, very low. Right. And hitting this hitting the Pentagon. Yeah. So that that's a I guess. So what's your what's things. your verdict on it then? It's, like I said, I, I can't say that I think, but I think it's 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 too much to just ignore. Yeah, like, if I if I had to if I had to pick, I would say it is a it was a self made move to get the U.S. over to the Middle East. Would be my statement. Yeah, 
and I can't or I don't want to. As sad argue as that, that is, yeah. yeah. But I have this. Uh, I don't know if I can how well I can summarize this because it's kind of long. But it, I found a post today, and it kind of highlighted a lot of things. I guess expounded upon some things I knew and highlighted some things that I didn't. But it okay. was uh, it was like, like about a question of nine eleven. Yeah, like why people think. You know, basically, what's the foundation for the conspiracies? Okay. I'll try to highlight them the best I can. Um, so it says, airport security existed before and on 9-11. 19 suspicious people and gangs carrying knives and mace through metal detectors and x-rays and past trained airport security personnel do not succeed with a 20% success rate, let alone 100 Metal detectors detect metal. It's sort of what they do, according it's to the sort official of what story. They do. <laughs> according to the official story, they were never stopped, nor the knives or metal mace canisters detected. This would require three different airpoint security teams and their machinery to fail simultaneously and about 19 times over in the same space of an hour or two on one morning. Yeah. Like, that's... I mean, we, it's you, hard you to can't ignore, bring, like you said. You it's can't bring a bottle that. opener into, into Universal. Yeah. Yet these dudes, 19 of them within two hours at one airport, get through well, with box cutters. I um, I flew out of Melbourne International one year up to Maryland, um, and I had one of those. Yeah, I was, wallet. I was there. No, nah, different time. And at BWI, they made you throw it out, and you're oh, like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I got up here with it. Yeah. yeah, so it was one of those like credit card multi-tool made of metal. Right. And it Maybe has all the stuff on it. Yeah. yeah, it was a... And, and I... You know, walk through Melbourne, fine, whatever. And then when I was coming back home through BWI, they're like, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's mine. He's like, yeah, you, you can't have you can't, this. Yeah. And I was like, I <laughs> flew up here with it. And he was like, well, they messed up. This has got to go. I was like, all right, take it. It was like $2. Come on, go ahead. But just did but maybe, maybe you're messing up, dude. Someone messed up. To be fair, Melbourne yeah. airport security, I feel like I'm just in like lunch line, like waiting for right. my pizza like, and season like fries. Cops. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's see if uh, what else we got. Uh, this one says mathematically by far the most entertainable 9 11 coincidence that I know of. Odds are a gigantic one in five, whether by missile, explosive, or by aircraft, depending on your source, the side of the Pentagon that was hit just so happened to have been vacated sometime before the attack. It was the one area of the building that was largely empty, ostensibly due to renovation work. So that is the safest side for the explosion to occur. If one wishes to allay reasonable suspicion of an inside job oh, while risking okay. the fewest lives of Defense Department colleagues. And then this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> hey, guys, stay away from uh, Quadrant B. There's going to be some renovations tomorrow. OK, yeah. yeah, Steve, you got it. And then this was another good one. It says mathematically the next most entertainable coincidence, um, but still extremely unlikely on the morning of 9-11, NORAD and other air control authorities were given a hijack drill called Vigilant Guardian, an exercise that delayed the response by NORAD to the alleged hijackings through confusing what was happening real world with the drill. One of the already likely conspirators then tried to dispel this by claiming that the ex exercise was that the exercise used the scenario of a Russian bomber, not hijackings. So there just so happened to be like... An exercise that morning. According to this, 125 people inside the Pentagon were were killed by said explosion crash. Right. And then all 64 people on the plane. So that's 189. But also, if it wasn't the plane that went up, they could have just crashed that plane wherever the hell they wanted. They could float out in the middle of the Atlantic and drowned it. Drowned right. it. Right. Drowned it? Drown it. Uh, drowned it. Dr drowned it. Yeah. Then the people that didn't get the memo about Section B being under, you know, hey, yeah, sorry guys, like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted my Taco Bell, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this is another good one. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, well, no, hold on, I got to read. Ooh. Uh, it's kind of a long one. I have also like, heard, but I feel like I've also seen that it was disproven. Was the one about, um all like the money, like the trillions of dollars thing disappearing. Does that ring any bells? Um, no, I, like, I don't think I have it here, but I saw something about like a lot of money, but I don't, I just read it assuming it meant like 
uh, like value of destruction. Okay, so this one is the day before 9-11, the Pentagon reported $2.3 trillion missing from the federal budget. Mm, so they yanked it before the explosion. The before, so they did not report it. Um, accounting entries totaling that amount that lacked adequate audit trails were detailed in government records, news reports, and in officials' testimonies long before 9-11. So people just brought it up that it was, oh, it was the day before, but it's something that was already well known. Oh, so that was disproven? Yeah, so the it's disproven, um, but the conspiracy is that the day before is when it was reported, but really it wasn't. Gotcha. All right, so I'll read this one. This is the last one. Donald Rumsfeld. Ugh. <laughs> Remember that name? I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so it says, back to the more insane improbabilities. The E-4B is maybe the most specialized known aircraft in the U.S. military. A maximum of four of them existed on 9-11, one on emergency standby. This aircraft is the night watch capability of the United States and is the airborne command and control platform for coordinating the country's military in the event of a national emergency. In short, it exists for the president and the defense secretary to govern the country from the sky during a nationwide scale event on the ground. So at the time of the first impact at the World Trade Center, the E-4B was on the tarmac waiting to take off. It was then airborne during the other crashes. In fact, it was the E-4B that was identified flying in a holding pattern over southern Washington, D.C. when the Pentagon was hit and identified and filmed by witnesses. Its activities are secret. The commander of this aircraft on that day just so happened to be George Bush's chief intelligence advisor on the emergency command aircraft of the United States. What is the president's chief intelligence advisor doing commanding the National Emergency Response Coordination Platform before the first crash at the World Trade Center? Before there was officially any knowledge of any unusual event that day, the odds against that happening are beyond astronomical, and that is before you factor in that this advisor had already been retired from the Air Force for 26 years. Now on 9-11, right when the planes hit, he's commanding the E-4B. So, as if this coincidence needed any more final nails in the coffin, the advisor's explanation was, one, he was on his way to Offutt Air Force Base. Two, he was going on an inspection tour to an unspecified nuclear weapons site under the name End-to-End -End Review. Neither of these would require the E-4B Advanced Airborne Command Post, which is not for jetting around in. In fact, in 2022 numbers, to keep the E-4B in the air for one hour cost about $200,000. Yeah, they'll just lose that money, too. That's added to the 2.4 trillion. Yeah. So it just so happens that his chief intel advisor, who's been retired for 26 years, is flying around the crash site before anything even happened. If you had to guess <clears throat> how long an E-4B can fly in the event of an emergency, how long do you think it could stay airborne? Uh, it would help if I knew, like, average plane time. I'll say a week. That's exactly right. A full week, it can stay airborne in the event of emergency, which is crazy. It's got good gas mileage. Oh, or big tanks. <laughs> maybe maybe that's, uh, that was the one on the bottom of the plane that people saw. Let's see? Mm -hmm. But they crashed it, so they, they only lasted yeah. a day. Well. Yeah, it seems like the... Um, <laughs> not even a day. Yeah, well, a morning. <laughs> they are morning. Or they were in morning. They're probably still in, you get it. They're sad. Yes. Yeah. 9-11 was bad. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, however, this, uh, you say what you were going to say first. I'm going to try not to oh, gonna. I was going to transition. I was going to go in on a lighter note. Why don't we? Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> well, let's, let's stick on a heavier note for a second. And uh, okay. we'll talk about how, when this episode releases, today will be a remembrance of uh, the 23rd anniversary of Nickelback releasing the album Silver Side Up. <laughs> is that from that album? I hope it is. No, but I think uh, this is okay. how you remind me. Is. Oh, so. <laughs> equally bad. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got, if you got a lighter note, let's, uh, 
I have, I have, I think heavier notes sprinkled in throughout. Okay. So we'll go back and forth. It'll be nice, even keel here. Um, yes. How many, uh, how many names can you come up with for underwear? Ready to go. Oh, what are you, what are you looking for? Boxers? Just, briefs? Yeah, that's one. That's two. Hanes? Mm, Fruit yeah. of the Loom? No, 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 not really. Shorts? Say. No. Uh, thongs? Mm, maybe. Tidy whities Oh, that's one. Mm-hmm. Where are we, where are we, what are we, what are we doing here? You got any more? So, uh, Mike Tyson? No. Oh, like no, draw- you said underwear, not boxers. Like drawers, right? Drawers. Draws. Draws. Yeah. Nice. Okay, anyways. I gotta find a cricket noise to put there. <laughs> Just curious um, how many you could say. Let's talk about irony. Can you guess the number one song on 9-11? Is it Ironic by Alanis Morissette? No, it's more like oh. coincidental and like, like, why would God do that? Is it Superman by Kryptonite? No, nah, worse than that. Superman by Kryptonite? Or no, Kryptonite by <laughs> Three Doors Down? Is that how it is? Where did Superman come from? <laughs> I go crazy and you call me Superman. Um, more ironic, you said? It's uh, probably not. Is it a Weird Al song instead of going Flash? It's Crash. Oh. No, it's Fallen by Alicia Keys. Oh, it's a good song. Or she looks at the <laughs> towers and goes, I keep on falling. She didn't do that, but isn't that like, no. like the song's called Fallen and that's kind of what they did? Yeah, they fell. They gone. They gone. Um, hmm. Yeah, so transition to something that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's not bad riddles. Okay, I got some um, some shower thoughts here for you if you want to expand oh, yours? upon them. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're not mine. Okay. But maybe you could expand upon them or maybe you could uh, just give me your, your two cents on them. Okay. So, shower thoughts with David. There are almost 7 billion smartphones in the world and we have yet to see a truly unexplainable phenomenon caught on video. People always claiming there's ghosts or UFOs or. Yeah. Okay. The average lifespan is 76 years old. Middle age isn't 50. It's 38. Yeah. Makes me feel old. Yeah. Should make you feel middle aged. True. Almost. Um, If time travel was possible, moments in quotes would get crowded with tourism. Like, hey, let's all go back and see when Rome fell or when, uh, mm, you know, I mean, if everyone was capable of it, but like if there's like some fucking genius in his basement, like he'll be the only dude back there. It's going to be him. Yeah. <laughs> the lack of teenage pregnancy, the, la- <clears throat> hey, the lack of teenage pregnancies at Hogwarts is unrealistic considering that the students had no sex ed classes. Yeah. You know how we use coat hangers? They got a wand. Yeah. To like do magic or to go up there? No, like fetus abortus. <laughs> fetus <laughs> deletus. <laughs> fetus deletus. Uh. Um, teeth are such a design flaw in humans. Why can't our teeth regenerate throughout our lives instead? They're the most high maintenance part of our bodies. Yeah. The most useful, probably. Well, mm-hmm. I guess minus lungs your heart and your brain external hitting a bong is using all four elements at once damn they're like the avatar (laughs) all four elements earth wind fire yeah and water yeah wow captain planet would be proud (laughs) captain planet (laughs) (laughs) he's a hero (laughs) yeah dude (laughs) Uh, I think, I think nine eleven used all four. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. They did because there was wind, which you know, obviously the the plane displaces to hit the tower. Very true. There was fire when it happened. It fell to the earth, and they used water to put it out. Yeah, I mm-hmm. I would agree. Um, if Disney can't be sued by customers who have used Disney Plus, they have no financial incentive to keep their park rides safe. Read that one again. 
if Disney can't be sued by customers who have used Disney Plus, they have no financial incentive to keep their park rides safe. Okay. Mm, yeah, I don't know. So uh, speaking, we'll get, speaking of Disney and conspiracy theories, you heard the uh, the one about Frozen? I think so, but refresh my memory. Uh, just about how Walt Disney was rumored to have his head for, or maybe his whole body. Oh, his, his, one or the other. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he could, you know, if technology ever advanced to the point of bringing him back, then. Oh, it reminds blah, me blah, of blah, that whatever. family guy clip. You remember that clip? Yeah. So then they said that they <laughs> made so the movie funny. frozen so that when pe- people Google Walt Disney frozen, that doesn't come up, but the movie comes up. That's pretty good. And the fact that the movie was a banger is, uh, yeah, helps out a little bit. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Um, if there ever is an actual apocalypse, billionaires will likely be unable to access their bunker compounds as the security slash janitor slash maintenance crews will already have moved their friends and family in. It would probably deny them entry. Yeah. No. If you smell your own fart, you're just putting it back in. <laughs> Huh. Well, like your boy said, better out than in, I always say. <laughs> Gamers have an enormous amount of geographical knowledge of places that don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that reminds me of uh just how the most famous athlete in Philly is a fictional character. Yeah, that's pretty good. Wait, I thought wasn't Balboa who's uh Oh no, I'm thinking of the other Rocky. Never mind. Yo, Adrian. No, yeah, I'm thinking of a different one. I don't know. Um, oh, the one from Three Ninjas? Rocky <laughs> loves Emily. <laughs> Getting fat is fun, but being fat is not fun. <laughs> Getting thin is not fun, but being thin is fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Insurance <laughs> is the only industry whose entire business model is not giving you what you paid for. Ain't that the goddamn truth? <laughs> uh, you don't <laughs> you don't realize how fat you are until you see a picture you didn't know you were in. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, even the ones I know I'm in is uh starting to get a little I mean, we ain't doing portrait mode no more. Or like vertical portrait mode. Being naked while wearing shoes somehow feels being somehow feels more naked than being naked. It does. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I don't like it. I can see that. Yeah. Attractive nurses, male or female, most likely never get accurate heart rates from their patients. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad at all. Well, I'll give you one more. Ooh, I'll give That's you the. Nice. Top one of the year. Let's see. No, top one of all time. How about that? Oh, no, just there. Yeah, we'll just do this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because of AI video generation throughout the entire thousands of years of human history, video proof, in quotes, is only going to be a thing for around 100 years. So in 100 years time, it'll be so developed that you won't know what's real and what's fake. I think that's yeah. true. It's already getting there with some stuff. It's already getting there. I saw something that was like uh like <clears throat> AI image generation is only gonna get worse and worse because what it oh. does is it pulls from all like every image out there on the web and gets its right. knowledge to create your image. But there's more and more AI images being put out there. You know the ones where people have like six fingers and like the shit AI True. can't do. So it's or it doesn't pulling spell something info. correctly. Yeah. Or... So it's pulling info from those photos too into it it's and making make it, it worse. progressively worse. Yeah. That's not bad. I was like, huh. So until Arnold Schwarzenegger kicks down the front door and says, yeah. "No, no, no." You know what the difference is between nine eleven and a cow? Um, um, a cow has. Nope, I don't. You can't milk a cow for 23 years. Sheesh. Damn, that's pretty rough. <laughs> Here for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's milking this. Yeesh. Yeesh. Uh, you know, yeah. 
only like 3000 people, you know, it's like Pearl Harbor or whatever, you know, <laughs> call that milk and that for what? Uh, 80, 80 something years. Well, we weren't there for that. Or were we? Hi, everyone. I just wanted to take a second to ask that you all hit those like and subscribe buttons. Or if you're an audio listener, go ahead and give the guys five stars. Thanks for listening. Now back to the Poor Choices show. Speaking of 9-11. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess the yeah. number the number not included, which is 2001. Yeah. All right. All right. I've got some 2001 trivia for you. Hit me. Who won the World Series in 2001? Uh, um, Boston Red Sox? It was the Arizona Diamondbacks. Oh, Luis Gonzalez, walk-off single. Shit. All right, go ahead. What was the first state to legalize online gambling on June 5th, 2001? My educated guess is going to say Nevada. It was Nevada. Okay. What was the most popular TV show in 2001? Ooh, I'm going to go with South Park. It was Friends. Oh, it was Friends? Okay. Yeah. On December 2nd, 2001, what publicly traded company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which at the time was the largest bankruptcy in U.S. history? Kodak? I don't know. Enron. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, I knew that. Shit. On November 10th, 2001, Apple launched the first iPod. What was the retail price? Ooh, ooh, I'm going to say 200 bucks. 399. <laughs> Holy shit. What did 390,127 people, almost 1% in the United Kingdom, state as their religion on the 2001 census forms, making it the fourth largest reported religion in the country? Mm, hmm. I'm going to say between two. I'm going to say Scientology. Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? In 2001, okay. in 2001, what country became the first in the world to legalize same-sex marriage? Um, I'm going to go. Is it a European country? Yeah. Yep. Um, like Luxembourg? It was the Netherlands. Damn. Was close just a little boat ride over damn in 2001 what file sharing service was shuttered after numerous lawsuits by record companies gotta be limewire is it the, the other, other one? one um um what's the other one what's it start with an n oh napster there you go yeah the music video for the song weapon of choice which features christopher walken bouncing off walls and gliding through the air was by which band i don't know smashing pumpkins Fat Boy Slim. <laughs> yeah, I never would have got that. Okay. <laughs> and the last one, name as many of the top five most popular Google searches from the year 2001 as you can. Um, are any of them having to do with 9-11? Yes. How many people died in 9-11? No, they're just, they're like terms, not questions. Oh, 9-11. Uh, World Trade Center. World Trade Center. Um, Diamondbacks. Nope. Nickelback. No. Um, Apple. No. Um, and Ron. I don't know if, don't know if you're going to get any of them. <laughs> George Bush. Uh, no. Um, I'll give you Harry 10 Potter. seconds. Harry Potter's one. Hey, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Pee Wee Herman. Nope. One more guess. Um, Shoot till you miss. Hot dogs. What did I say that uh, I used to go around putting in people's mailboxes when I was a kid? Well, in 2001, when there was a thing going around. Oh, I didn't put this in. Cicadas? No. No, I didn't put this in people's mailboxes, but I put in something that looked like it in a Poop. Ziploc bag. Poop. Uh, oh, anthrax. Damn it. Anthrax. Yeah. And the other two were CNN and Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Why? You know, I don't I don't have the answers to all of these questions. <laughs> OK, that's very rude. Uh, we could have sat here for the next three years and I never yeah, would have guessed yeah, I know, Nostradamus. I know 
Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. How bizarre. Do, 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 do. We went double or nothing. That's right. Okay, so last week we did um, how these teams got their names, the AL East. We're going to reverse it and go this week. How these MLB teams got their names, the NL East. Ooh. So first team is going to be, how did the Philadelphia Phillies get their name, David? If I had to guess, I would say it's because they're from Philly. Uh, nail on the head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> being one of the major league's oldest teams, got their name in a fairly straightforward manner. The name Phillies is a shorthand for Philadelphia. The team was originally established in 1883, and they were known as the Philadelphia Quakers. For their first few years in 1890, they officially adopted the name Phillies, which has remained ever since. The name was a simple and effective way to represent the city of Philadelphia and has become a significant part of the team's identity and tradition. The Quakers just doesn't have the same ring to it. Like, would would their like logo be homeboy from like the oats, <laughs> like sitting there? Like, it would be that uh, to do with the hat and the, like that's yeah, the puffy from, from, yeah, the oatmeal the oats. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. like the Quaker oats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. How about um? How did the Atlanta Braves get their name, David? Something to do with Indians. I think that's a good guess. Something to do with Indians. That's pretty yeah. good. Um, so the name Braves for the Major League Baseball team has an interesting history tied to the team's early years. The franchise was originally established in 1871 as the Boston Red Stockings. Shout out to last week. Um, over time, the team went through several name changes. So 1871 to 75. They were the Boston Red Stockings. 1912 to 1952, they were the Boston Braves. 1953 to 1965, they were the Milwaukee Braves. And the 1966 to current Atlanta Braves, when they relocated to Atlanta, where they've continued to use the name. The Braves name has thus traveled with the franchise, though its various relocations become a historic and recognizable part of the team's identity. The name was chosen to symbolize bravery and strength. The team also had connections with Native American imagery and symbols during this era, though the modern use of the name is more about tradition than any specific cultural reference. Not bad. Heard it here first. Still not canceled. Not yet. How did the New York Mets get their name? Um, I'm going to say it's because they played in metropolitan New York. Very good. So established in 1962, got their name as a nod to New York's baseball heritage. The team, the team's name Mets is short for metropolitans, reflecting a desire to capture the spirit of New York city and its metropolitan area. When they were founded, they were created to fill the void left by the departure of the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York giants who had moved to California. The name Metropolitans was chosen to evoke the city's grand urban identity and to symbolize the team's ambition to represent all of New York, not just a single borough or area. I didn't realize they were so new. I was going to say, if you said when were the Mets, I'd have been like, eh, 1910. And now I'm trying to figure out who my grandmother would have rooted for before the Mets. Uh, Brooklyn, probably the Dodgers or the New York Giants. Okay. 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 Um, next one I have is how did the Washington Nationals get their name, David? Um, I'm going to guess because Washington is the nation's capital. It's pretty darn good. Yeah, I will stick with that. So established in 2005, the Washington Nationals chose their name as a nod to the city's rich baseball history and its national significance. The name Nationals pays homage to a previous Washington baseball team, the Senators, played in the city from 1901 to 1960. When the Expos moved to D.C. and became the Nationals, the team sought a name that connected the city's heritage. Nationals was chosen because it reflects both Washington's status as a nation's capital and ties to the old Senators team, which was a well-known part of Washington's baseball history. I think it's, it's funny that... A team from Canada, like became moved to the, the nation's capital. Yeah, I think it was much more along the lines of like, well, Montreal's not exactly bringing in the money. Let's 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 bring in a team back to a a well established baseball town, and obviously the nation's capital, where there's going to be more 
people and, and money and just yeah, it brought money yards. in for what sixty years? Is it nineteen oh one to, to 50? sixty? Yeah. Uh so next question: Do they have senators in Ottawa? Yeah, it's a hockey team, right? But like, I, I get the Washington senator's name, but like, I wonder what significance that has. Well, David, I can tell you the Ottawa Senators drew their name from a historic Ottawa hockey team. The original Ottawa Senators were a prominent team in the early days of hockey, playing in the NHL from its inception in 1917 to 1934. The team was named after the Roman Senators, reflecting a sense of prestige and history. Um, so the modern Senators reflects both a respect for the past and a desire to link their new team with the Ottawa's storied hockey tradition. Okay. And last team, the current Miami Marlins, former Florida Marlins. How did the Florida and or Miami Marlins get their team name? That's a tough one. It's tough. I would guess I can get that it. Florida waters are populated with Marlins. That's a great guess. So here I have <laughs> that the Miami Marlins originally known as the Florida Marlins got their name from the Marlin fish, which is native to the waters off the coast of Florida. The Marlin is known for its speed and agility attributes that the team hoped to embody. Well, they should keep hoping. Um, to be fair, they did win what a world series, the Gary Sheffield, Gary Sheffield days. Sheffield. Hey, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And, so uh, when, I know more. Is there a Moises Alou on that team? Uh, he was a Montreal expo. I can tell you that much. Okay. Keep reading. So the franchise, when they were established in 1993, chose Marlins to reflect the local local marine life and the connection to South Florida region. Like I said, um, in 2012, the team underwent a rebranding and changed their name from the Florida Marlins to Miami Marlins to better represent their new home city of Miami and its vibrant multicultural community. The name Marlins was retained to maintain continuity and preserve the team's identity while aligning more closely with the city it now represents. So, Fish. Was that continuity supposed to be continuity? Yeah, it was. Okay. Listen, we have one every episode. <laughs> <laughs> and today it's continuity. Well, you know. Continuity. Continuity. <laughs> what do you want Con- it to be? Continuity. Continuity. Con- continuity. Continuity. What are you yeah, trying to it's continuity. You trying to fuck it up? Continu- continuously. Continuously to maintain continuity. No, it's it's just continuity. 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 That's, the That's what you said. That's the new word of the day. Continuity. Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Myself. <laughs> uh, so the Marlins also won the World Series in 2003. Uh-huh. Okay. Moises well, Alou. When they when they won, no, when they won in 1997, Moises Alou was on the team. And the okay. one I thought but didn't say was Bobby Bonilla was on the team. Yeah, he was. I just picture Moises Alou as an expo with Vlad just hanging out. Okay. Second um, base, Moises Alou, second base? Or was he outfield? He was left field. I do okay. remember him as an infielder, though. Uh, we also have Jeff Conine. Oh, yeah. We have Edgar Renteria. Oh, Edgar. I still remember him as a, he's a Mariner in my mind. Yeah, same. Craig Council. Mm-hmm. Craig's who'd have on. Pi- who do they have pitching? Uh, Al Leiter. Uh-huh. Kevin Brown, Alex Fernandez, Tony Saunders sounds familiar. Levon Hernandez. I could leave on or off either way. Eh, it's up to him. Uh, and uh, Antonio Alfonseca? Uh, Kurt Miller. Yeah, the pitchers. I don't really. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, Mark Kotze sounds familiar. No, he doesn't. Kurt Abbott <laughs> sounds familiar. Uh, Josh Booty. There you go. Rocking everywhere. Rocking everywhere. Woody, 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 Woody. Todd Dunwoody. All right, let's do this draft. I I, I looked up the. Uh, the Quakers thing when you're reading that, and apparently Philly's nickname is the Quaker City. I can see that. Yeah, I don't know how you can see that because it comes from the religious society of friends, also known as the Quakers, who settled and founded the city. Yeah, the Quakers are a Christian religious sect that originated during the English Civil War. I can see it because there's still a ton of um, 
of Amish in Pennsylvania. That's got to be the Amish capital. Yeah. And I, it's kind of an affiliate of Amish as Quakers, right? Like Catholics and Christians kind of affiliate, but you know, Quakers and Amish. Do Amish like oatmeal? Because that's definitely an Amish dude in that circle, that logo. No, it's a Quaker. Well, he looks Amish. It's the Quaker oatmeal And then guy. What's, what's the other Amish Quaker religion people? I don't know. Mennonites? Mennonites. That was perfect timing because that popped up on Google and I was like, did you see me side eye it? Like, no. Mennonites? No. <laughs> no, the Quaker Oats man is not Amish. So the Please. Amish are Christians who believe in the Bible is the word of God, while Quakers may not identify as Christians and believe the Bible is not the only holy book. Quakers are not baptized members, celebrate communion, while Amish have a variety of traditions. Amish have Calvinist theology, while Quakers have a theology that is more open to possibility of understanding salvation in this life. Hmm. Well, the Quaker Oats Company's founders uh, chose quaker name to represent their products good quality and honest value so it could have been the mennonite oats doesn't have the same ring to it though <laughs> that reminds me of something the mennonite oats no this is really good you ever seen the uh i guess it was i think i saw it on reddit but it was technically like a twitter thread like this dude just like posted a tweet and kept responding to himself Mm -hmm. um about triscuits did you ever see that no I don't, no so the, this is pretty good it says okay buckle up i want to talk to you about triscuit several years ago i was at a party and i spotted a box of triscuits and i asked everyone what does the word triscuit mean it's clearly based on the word biscuit but what does the try mean the consensus was that try means three maybe three layers or three ingredients no one knew for sure though so i googled it but here's the thing. Google didn't seem to have an official answer either. Just more guesses. So we went straight to the source. We emailed Nabisco and the response <laughs> we and the response we got a few days later shook us to the core. Here it is. Thank you for your interest in our Triscuit crackers. No business record survived, which specifically explained the origins or inspiration for the name Triscuit. But we do know the name was chosen as a fun derivation of the word biscuit. The try does not mean three. If you haven't done so already, please add our site to your favorites and visit us again soon. So he said, the try does not mean three. How? How do they know that it doesn't mean, but not know what it does mean? Uh, hey. Also, also, no business records survived. What the hell happened at the Triscuit factory? <laughs> <laughs> Did the building explode? Did someone run out of the doors and yell, it doesn't mean three right before perishing in a giant blaze? <laughs> you know what? Triscuit did 9-11. Maybe. <laughs> That's the title for this episode. <laughs> Triscuit did 9-11. Let me write it down. Dang, I could use a Triscuit. I got some tzatziki sauce in my fridge. I could dip a Triscuit in there right now. So hold on. We're not, we're not done. Okay. I was baffled, and I could not stand not knowing. So I did a little sleuthing online and stumbled on some early Triscuit advertisements. Take a look at these bad boys, and I will send this to you. Is it like them, like with like blueprints of like the World Trade Center and like the Pentagon? No, it's it's just like an early Trisk Triscuit ad. So it says, Triscuit, baked by electricity. Triscuits is the newest and perhaps best creation, blah, 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 blah. So he said, in the early 1900s, Triscuit was, Triscuit was run out of Niagara Falls and their big selling point being baked by electricity. They were the only food on the market prepared by this 1903 process. Look at the lightning bolts. And that's when it clicked. Electricity biscuit. Triscuit means oh, electricity biscuit. So he discovered it for them, basically. Right. <laughs> because their PR department didn't know. And what year are we talking that they are posting? Like, how, how long ago is, are these Triscuit ads? Like, is electricity like this? The like, oh, it's he, electricity. Well... If you look at what I sent, yeah, does it have a date on there? Uh, and I'm sure they put the S in it so that you pronounce it Tris. Because yeah. if you just had a C instead of a you you have Trickets. Trick, trick it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Triscuits. Electricity. Okay. Okay. So the I'm not sure when the ad is from. It just says it's a 1903 process. Oh, so yeah, electricity would have been like, ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got electric biscuits, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Speaking of electric, that reminds me of something. That I, I told Kayla if I ever bought a Tesla, Ew, the license that. plate would say BGY WGY. So Wait, if you saw, that. hold on, yeah. So type it and then pretend it's a word and tell me how you would pronounce it. Biggie Wiggy, close. Oh, but Boogie yeah. Wiggy. Yeah. So yeah. it's electric. Boogie Wiggy Wiggy, because it'd be an electric car. I, I was more proud of that than you're laughing at. Yeah, I mean it's good, but I would I I would see it and go, what's a biggie wiggy? <laughs> You'd get it eventually, or it'd be like one of those like, what would Jesus do? Like W G W D? Like what is this? Like big girls? <laughs> uh, big girls, what? y'all would. What get did I say? W some B G Y Y G Y. Uh, big girls yell. White girls. Yeller, uh, big girls yawn, whittle girls <laughs> yelp. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that should be the title. <laughs> <laughs> what big girl? Big girls yell, whittle girls yelp. Yeah, I, li- I like Triscuits did nine eleven better, but yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Um, It's draft time, baby. So we're going to do the AFC East all-time defensive draft. Yes. Yes, we are. And in this draft, when we say all-time defense, corner, linebacker, defensive line, and safety. Four positions. And as before, one player from each team and the same player cannot be picked twice. Correct. So with that, with my first round pick, I'm going to take cornerback Darrell Rivas. Yes, he did it. Did it. Okay. With my first pick in the AFC East all-time defensive draft, I am going to go defensive line, Bruce Smith, Buffalo Bills. I thought you might do that. And now I think... Because I know what I want to do next. Do it. But then I'm Hmm? making a sacrifice. And I don't know if I want to do it. (laughs) Um, All right. So I took Reva. So all those are gone. I want to do that because I can't do that. And I can't do that. And I. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. With my second pick, I'm going to take safety Rodney Harrison. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like that was my next pick or anything. God, ah, it. Well. it feels like my draft last night. Jesus Christ. I got <laughs> fucking pounded in the A. Yeah, you, hard. Have to, you have to tell me about that one. I hate my team so much. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, in that case, I'm going to stick in the realm of safety with my number two pick at safety. I'm going to go Jamal Adams, New York Jets. Okay, you you left me with what I want. Now mm-hmm. I just need to... Wait, can I retract that? No, you didn't let me take back my <laughs> NFC East shit. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, uh, ooh. Okay, actually, hmm. you know what? That's good, that's fine, I'm cool. I can go really good on one and, like, kind of good on the other, or I can go, like, good like- and good. Mine are, mine's, yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm happy either way. I'm just going to do it, fuck it. Okay. With my third pick, I'm going to take linebacker Zach Thomas. Not too shabby. Well, with my third pick... Mm, my mouse cursor was on my neck and I thought it was a bug and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> mm, whoopsies. All right, with my third pick at linebacker, I'm going to go Miami Dolphins. Nick Oyenkanti. <laughs> I like it. I like it. He was a... Uh, totally butchered that name. Good, good and man. I apologize to all Dolphin fans. <laughs> they got a lot more to be upset about than than that. True. Like having two on like a four-year deal. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... So with my last pick, I'm going to take defensive tackle Kyle Williams for the Buffalo Bills. 
Okay. And that leaves me with my last pick at corner. I'm going to go Ty Law for the New England Patriots, number four. Not happy, not mad. I think it's decent. So I've got Darrell Rivas, Rodney Harrison, Zach Thomas, and Kyle Williams. Those three crushed me. Your defensive line could have been me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so I retract with my fourth pick. (laughs) (laughs) You could have taken Bell. So I had, let's see, Bruce Smith, Jamal Adams, uh, Nick Boyacante, and Ty Law. Ah, I'm, st- I'm not mad at it. It's a good, yeah, it's a good it's, lineup. It's hard to be upset with it. But your cornerback outdoes my corner. Your linebacker outdoes my linebacker. And your safety definitely outdoes my safety. But my defensive line out, defensive line you. So that's all I got. I've never been out defensive lined before. So you got, you got a C and I got a big old hard F. Because you got 75%, I got 25%. Okay, anyways. Did I ever tell you my dad was supposed to be, or not supposed, yes, supposed to be. He was supposed to be at the Pentagon on 9-11. Did I ever tell you that? Damn. No. So my grandfather had this thing where he would like, he would like get really stressed out. And like every time they were supposed to come down, like they would supposed to come down this day and I don't know if he'd like wake up and be like, oh, I'm forgetting something and they wouldn't come down. They'd come down the next day. So they were supposed to come down the day before and he had his little episode. So they came the day after. So the day they came down, dad stayed home because they were coming down and that mm-hmm. was nine eleven. Damn. So he wasn't going to be wild. in that wing, but he was supposed to be there he'd have been sitting there eating his taco bell and like what the fuck yeah. was that? <laughs> holy shit uh yeah so i've i've asked him the whole uh i guess not ask but like conspiracy stuff him. yeah and he's like no i i picked up plane parts and i'm like well they put them there <laughs> <laughs> hey dave like, could i'm you not doubting that yeah. this thing Boop. yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks man Boop. it's a, it's like one of those uh like old models like dropping her like tissue or whatever and the guy's like could you pick up my tail wing yeah <laughs> uh, well this week on my ask reddit i have what is the most bizarre do 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 i was saving it for that but you you right off the bat two minutes in uh, yeah i have what up. is the most what is the most bizarre thing you've caught yourself doing after your brain's autopilot misfired after your brains it's misfired you know i was trying to think for me and i i couldn't think of anything like super crazy but like why like am i of, holding this or like why uh, how did yeah. I, how did this get here well i'll give you some some inspiration yeah so i have vigorously picking my nose while holding a cigarette and driving crammed a lit cigarette right up my nose oh that's rough damn <laughs> poor guy or girl damn I have swished my mouthwash for a solid 30 seconds and then just <laughs> swallowed it and then just spit it out on the floor where I was standing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. And I, so that's what I'll say. Like I, nothing like popped out, but there were so many of these that I could relate like this one. Yeah. The night before my very first day at work where I have to to bring my own lunch, I got all the ingredients out to make my sandwich for tomorrow, and immediately after I made it, I walked into the living room, turned on the TV, and I ate it. (laughs) (laughs) Just like, yeah, I'm going to, yep, oh, made that food, going to eat it now. Look at shit. I have drove home from work, parked, went upstairs, opened the door, started to take off my shirt, then remembered it was the middle of my shift and I hadn't left to go home, but just to go buy a drink. <laughs> yeah, that's not autopilot. That's like, oops, I thought I was just going to get a drink. Oh, I'm already home, guys. Sorry, I'm not going to be going back. No, but uh, he, he was he was still at work. He thought well, he, was he was at home. The clock. Oh, he was at work. Yeah, he he didn't go and home. Started he started taking just, off his clothes? Yeah, like he thought <laughs> he was walking up the steps to his house, but he was just walking up the steps back to work yeah that's just, that's more that's that's a lot deeper than just being an autopilot <laughs> he's drinking or something <laughs> uh well speaking of drinking this dude said tried to turn the sun off i had a bad hangover opened my back door feeling for the light switch no light switch 
the light was day. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking turn off, man. It's too bright in here. Come on, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty uh, good. This was said, turned around and went back home because I forgot my car keys. I was driving. Not possible. No, like he didn't forget his car keys. His brain just said, like, you forgot your keys. So gotcha. he turned around and went home and then realized he was driving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is a good one. Recently spent 10 minutes on the phone with State Farm trying to pull up my policy, getting increasingly annoyed at the fact they couldn't find my policy number. Then I remembered I have progressive. I've never had State Farm <laughs> in my life. <laughs> See, that's that's too wild. That's I, I, yeah, it's. I, well, I just, you just like you let your brain go and it's call like, this random insurance. Insur- well, no, you probably just like you're focused on other things and your brain is like, oh, I just saw a State Farm commercial. And then you're like, oh, I need to call my insurance. And I get I mean, it. I can I relate suppose. with those. Um, I dropped my pants when going through TSA. For those who fly <laughs> in the super early morning, it can be rough. I purposely didn't drink coffee so I could sleep on the plane. I was on, in the security line and did the normal routine of taking stuff out of my pockets and putting them in my laptop bag, then off with the shoes, placed on top of my luggage, then off comes the belt as usual. Then, of course, when you take off your belt, you take off your (laughs) pants. That's Uh, pretty good. Nope. (laughs) I don't think I have any that... The only thing like that kind of comes to mind is... I wouldn't really call it autopilot. It's just like forgetfulness. Like, I go to the store specifically for these certain things and I get home and I'm like, all right, I'm putting it together. I'm making whatever I'm making. I'm like, Oh, I didn't get the one thing that I knew I needed kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if that's autopilot, but uh, I think that's just like easily distracted. Like, did I tell you, did you ever meet Irvin who I was in the military with? I think so. It sounds very familiar. So he, he told me that he went to Walmart one time for deodorant and left with like a 50 inch TV and didn't get deodorant. <laughs> didn't get the deodorant. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, something shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. Yeah, exactly. Squat. Got a, I, got a, <laughs> <laughs> I got a few more. Okay. Um, I sat there at an intersection in suburban Palo Alto at 11 p.m., patiently waiting for the stop sign to change. Damn. That still says stop. All right. I'll hang out. Cool. This is this is a good one for you. This is this is autopilot. After an 8-hour day of cashiering at Target, which was so many robotic small talk conversations, I stopped at the dollar store on my way home. The conversation went something like this. The cashier, "Hi, how are you?" "Me, good. How are you?" "Cashier, I'm good. Thanks. Me, that's good. Did you find everything okay today?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was going to say like "Welcome to Target" or something. <laughs> Just <laughs> Uh, everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, got a bag of microwave popcorn and made it halfway up the stairs before realizing I didn't pop it. <laughs> this one, I, oh, I want some popcorn. I can yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I did this jokingly or if like I've accidentally done it, but it said, uh, I tapped a picture in the newspaper, hoping to see the full article. Took me a good five (laughs) seconds to realize where I messed up. That's pretty good. (laughs) That's pretty good. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another one for you. I work in a lab and you have to initial and date everything. The other day I crossed something off my grocery list, wrote a justification for the change and initialed and dated it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you know what? I, 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 I do have one that I kind of, I don't know if it's autopilot or just, just repetition, um, like at work. Well, that's Yeah, that, that'd qualify. Cause that's why so, it's on. Yeah. All the time, night and day at work. Um, and if you've ever worked in like a kitchen or a restaurant, you say corner, right? Yeah. Like coming Like before you turn the corner, you say the word corner. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times <laughs> I've said it at the grocery store, David. So <laughs> many so many times like i can count on t- more than i need more than two hands to count how many times i'm just like corner and they're like yeah just it's just like and, uh, you ever I, told I, yourself that you uh like you after i do 80, it i'm like 86 beer when you're out of ultras yeah yeah like every time i do it i'm just like what are you doing <laughs> like come on man i could just see like some lady like in like the back aisle like, you know, you go the- like up and down cereal and then, you know, whatever. And then the back is like 
dairy and shit. Like she's at the dairy just looking at you like <laughs> Who's what he are talking to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep my eye on him. I'm going to film him with my phone just in case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just in case, and just in case he uh, hits a tower or two. Ooh. He, ooh. Ah, yeah. Um, all right. Two more. I uh, tried okay. to open, tried to open my front door with my car remote. That's pretty tough. Okay. Yeah. And this one was pretty good. The pipe underneath my sink was broken. So I put a bucket below to catch the water leaking out. When it was full, I poured it back into the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I I would definitely do that. Be like, oh, it's full. <laughs> so and proceeded to flood my kitchen. See ya. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I just, I just there's nothing like that came to mind. But all of these, I was like, yeah, I've either done it or done something similar. I mean, I've definitely told myself with mouthwash, like early, early in the morning, just like don't swallow. Yeah, <laughs> I've definitely done that. Yeah. 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 So yep. um we're drinking beer. Shocker. We're drinking beer. We I don't actually, normally do that on this show, but we are. Yeah, we don't. Um, um but we decided to this time because we decided uh, to this time. You know. Happy nine eleven and Yeah, you know, pouring out for the homies and all that. And yeah, I might uh I might fall down the stairs after this in remembrance, but so what are you remembering this week? <laughs> Uh, well, what I'm trying to remember is why this fucking can is sticky. It's yeah. weird. It's a weird thing. Uh, this week I am drinking what is called Mermaids. Yes. I hate the name, but continue. It's an Imperial Fruited Sour Ale by Lupulin Brewing. Sounds German. Out of. Uh, I don't think it's from Germany. Well, before I find where it's from, it's, oh, Big Lake, Minnesota. Oh, yeah, Minnesota, sure. Yeah. Oh, I should Don't you know before I started. Uh, 8% alcohol by volume. Damn. It's an imperial sour ale with mango, orange, strawberry, pineapple, blackberry, and kiwi. Sounds delicious. And here, if you can gander upon it. Mm. I don't know if this was... You're pretty, you're pretty fuzzy, but it looks like I'm, like maybe a second on, grader uh, drew go. it. Maybe, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Maybe sixth grader. Maybe. There's no six. No way. Is that Ariel down there? Okay. Uh, that's the Little Mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, that's Ariel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, it's actually Quinn. It says Quinn, or maybe that's who drew it because there's only one name. I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can do what you did last week and pause for effect as if I haven't been drinking this. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. I don't even have any left. To <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just, we'll just pretend. Okay. It's tart, but it's good. It's an 8-4. That's pretty good. Yeah. Anything above 8 is like, I'll get this again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Well, what were you drinking? Drinking. Um, so from the 1300 Mile Brewing Company, which is out of Florida. Uh, I think down in the Keys, right? Yes. Uh, it was written on the, um, yeah, it's in Lakeland, Florida. Um, oh, I wish it had the Keys? It, no, I wish it had it on the can because like the box it came in had a really cool like named after the 1300 miles of coastline on Florida is what they named it after. Mm, that's what, okay. Um, I actually have a wheat ale this week. It is a blueberry wheat ale. A blueberry. Okay. Only 5%. So a nice normal beer. And it's got a, a frog um, snorkeling with a, a manatee in the background. <laughs> if you can see that. <laughs> so blueberry, <laughs> blueberry wheat ale. Um, and it's actually really darn good. Like it's a, a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Cause anytime I see ale, I'm like, eh, but yeah. I like the can and I like blueberry. So I got it and I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I would say if I had to grade it, I oh know I have to grade it. So I'm going to grade it a grade it. Let me give it a good eight, a nice solid B like it's, it's, it's pretty darn good. It's, it's very blueberry and not very ale-y. Um, and it's pretty light, it's like it's pretty light beer. So I could definitely, definitely drink these for sure. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Me somebody, too. somebody, uh, <laughs> went to Publix. Hmm. 
It's weird. How does she know that's where I got it? It's weird. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's I might have got it once or twice. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. I, you know, this was just beer uh, that I found at a store and it's flavored. So it's weird. I don't know where you found yours. That's where I got mine. I, uh, I found mine in, what did I say? Big Lake Minnesota. <laughs> Minnetoba. Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota. <laughs> Independent craft. Yeah. Uh how do you how do you get to the dark web? Any idea? I feel like you gotta know somebody. I think it's one of those things like, hey, my 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 buddy told me about this, and you're like, Oh yeah. But and I, you click on it and then like you're there. So it's a link? No, I I I've, in my head there's probably multiple like it's not just like one place, but it's like a collection of websites are considered dark web kind of thing, if that makes sense. And I yeah, feel like once, once you get to one, you're like, all right, I could probably find some other like, stuff. Is it, it's like, oh, I always thought, like what are you was trying to find? Internet? You're like trying uh, to buy drugs or something? Like, what are you doing? No, I'm just trying to find some good 9 11 jokes, but it's like, um, you don't need to go to the dark web for that. Well, Google's just like, like the first thing that comes up is like a Wikipedia article, like humor, humor based on September 11th attacks. <laughs> I don't care about that. You know what? The only thing worse than that plane on 9-11 that crashed into the field in Pennsylvania. What's that? It didn't crash into the League of Legends tournament world championship. A moment of silence for esports kids sex lives. Fuck them. Fuck them. Bitches. Peace ball. Peace ball. Peace y'all. Peace ball. Ball. <laughs> Peace ball. Peace y'all. <laughs> See you next time, y'all. Have a good day. <laughs> Night, evening, except for you sports kids. Fuck you. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs>